Welcome to the Prophetic Spiritual Warfare Podcast with host Kathy DeGraw. Seeking his glory releases his glory. I love his glory. I love it when God comes and manifests himself. We need his glory. And his glory are miracles. Our bodies healed. Our mind is delivered. Financial blessings come. Burdens are released. His glory is the place that we want to get to. But I didn't always know about his glory. I hadn't heard about it. I wasn't taught about the glory of God. I had spent two years of my life prostrate on my living room carpet, on church sanctuary floors, seeking the heart of the Father, getting to know Jesus, and allowing the Holy Spirit to teach and lead and instruct me. And I had amazing encounters. I remember going up into heaven, seeing my son who I lost in a miscarriage. I had encounter after encounter with Jesus where I felt as if I was dialoguing with him back and forth. I'd ask a question and he would respond. I had healings in those two years I was in the presence, but I still had not experienced the glory of God. His presence is good, but his glory is great. It's phenomenal. And it's his glory that makes ministering easy. When we get into his glory, we don't want to get out of our prayer worship time. When we release his glory, lives are changed. Miracles happen. My friends knew about the glory of God but I hadn't experienced it. And they started asking me about it, if I had experienced. After all, I was a John G. Lake healing room director. A lot of them thought I would have experienced the glory of God by now, but I hadn't. I wasn't taught. Even in the two years that I laid prostrate on the ground, I had the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But I didn't have a church or background that taught me about the glory of God, that there was even more. And my two years was phenomenal. But now I've experienced the more. And it started with friends planting a seed. Friends, I want you to hear that. It starts with us planting a seed. People started talking to me about the glory of God. They're like, have you ever experienced it? And they were telling me about manifestations of the Spirit, shaking in the glory, having that weight of His presence, His glory come upon you in such an astounding way that you can't move, you can't get off the carpet, and sometimes it's difficult to even take that next breath because it's like... Oh, God, you're right here in a fearful way, but a good way. My friends planted the seed, people that I worked with in the healing rooms, people I went to church with, some people that I would see at conferences. They planted the seed by talking about the glory of God. And friends, I was talking to Sid recently, and as I was talking to him, We were talking about the greater glory, what's coming on this earth. And I said, Sid, I said, we got to teach people to talk about the glory of God. We got to get the churches to know what the glory is. We got to get people an understanding, but then ignite them in such a way that it's all they want to do is talk about it and bring people in to that manifestation. I believe we have a responsibility, just like my friends had a responsibility. They stirred my desire. And I went out on a search to discover what the glory of God was. I started reading books. 
I remember how instrumental a couple of those books were. And I started reading Daniel. I had read Daniel so many times, but this time, Daniel 10 hit me in a profound way. During this time of seeking the glory, someone called me on the phone that I had never talked to. We were acquaintances, knew who each other were, and they all of a sudden randomly called me and we started talking and they had experienced the glory of God. They lived and moved in the glory of God and they happened to be coming to my state to visit some family and said, can I stop by and have a coffee? And that coffee ended up two weeks on the floor in my living room with the glory of God coming upon me so strong. I had never felt the glory of God manifest. I spent two weeks of my life just allowing the glory of God to come. And during that time, I went to church and I had a profound encounter with the Lord. And I was worshiping. And I am a worshiper. I love worshiping. And as I'm worshiping, my hand starts to shake a little bit. And I had started to read Daniel 10. And Daniel 10 talks about some manifestations he had. And as my hand starts to shake, I heard the Lord say, it's okay, Kathy, it's me. And I just continue to worship as I felt the same manifestations that Daniel 10 talks about when Daniel had his visitation. And in verse 7, it says, a great terror fell upon them. And that terror is like a trembling. And I was like, oh, Lord, you're here. You're here. You showed up. I cried out to God for his glory. I had been studying his glory. I underlined the Bible verses in my Bible in an orange pen to represent his glory. And so I knew where to find them. And I had read a book on his glory. But I hadn't gotten to this part in Daniel 10 yet where it talked about the manifestations. The Father had me live it before I read it. And it says, I heard the sound of his words. And I was in a deep sleep on my face with my face to the ground. And when we translate this in the complete Jewish Bible, he was prostrate. There's parts in this scripture in Daniel 10 where he went on his knees. It says, suddenly a hand touched me and it made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And that's what I experienced God touched me and I trembled. I trembled on my hands and it put me on my knees. It took my breath away. As his glory came, I could not stand any longer. As I'm shaking in the glory, knowing that the Father is right here with me. When we look at Daniel further, it says, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. And that's what I felt like the Father said to me. You want to understand me. You want to know me. You want to grow deeper with me. Now, I've come because of your words. Friends, what are you crying out for? 
Are you crying out for his glory? Are you crying out for more? Are you crying out to get to know him? Are you like, Father, I want to know your heart. Jesus, I want to know what moves you. Holy Spirit, cold labor with me. Are we crying out for more? Because here it says, I have come because of your words. And there's so much power in our words. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. The Bible says, call things that are not. It says, you'll have whatever you say. It says, speak to your mouth and it'll be removed. The Bible is full of audible things that we can speak out and produce a manifestation. And I was crying out for the glory of God. And now I saw the manifestation. But friends, I believe some of us don't see that manifestation because we're not crying out for it. We're not speaking out and decreeing. We're not spending that time in that secret place. We're not getting on the floor and crying out for the more that the Father has for us. He came because of what I said. Friends, what are you saying? I remember he kept coming upon me, coming upon me, and I'm worshiping. I'm still crying out with everything in me in song to worship him. And I got to the point where it's all I could do was lay prostrate. I couldn't even kneel anymore because the glory was coming on. And I remember taking three deep breaths. I was gasping for air because the weight and the thickness of his glory was so strong. In Daniel 10, 16, it says, I have retained no strength. And then verse 15, it says, I turned my face towards the ground and became speechless. And I got to that point where I couldn't sing, but I just prostrated myself in all of what the Father was doing. And all through it, he was talking me through it. He was being such a gentleman, helping me to have understanding of that which I didn't know. But I knew because my friend had planted that seed and now the Father was talking to me in my worship, and it was so beautiful. When I look at Daniel 10, I felt so many of those manifestations because I was in the glory of God. God was showing me something because I had been crying out for his glory. God is showing me that there was more. And he didn't leave me there. I remember I got back up to my knees because the worship songs were still going. And one of my favorite songs started as I got on my knees. And I just poured my love out to Jesus. And a song one of the lines is, I pour my love on you like oil upon your feet, like wine for you to drink. I pour my love on you. And friends, I felt as if I was being crucified. I felt as if I was the one being pierced with nails and stripped and whipped on my back. And I'm pouring my love on Jesus. And Jesus is standing in front of me. I could see his legs, his feet. It's so precious, it's hard to talk about. Jesus appeared to me right there while I was worshiping. And I just poured my praise. And it's all I know is there was an abundance of oil. My hands were on his feet, and it was so oily, so wet, and so slippery. 
And he was anointing me with his glory. It was such a profound encounter with the Lord. So personal. So intimate. It seemed like forever that song went on and the oil between his hands, my hands, his feet. It just went on forever. So slippery, so anointed, so beautiful. It changed my life, friends. It changed my life. And I went home that day and I read Daniel 10. I had already been reading the book of Daniel. But as I said before, I hadn't gotten to Daniel 10. And as I read it, I was awestruck. I was wrecked all over again in the presence of God. I'm like, God, you're such a gentleman. You led me through. You set me up. You had my friends talk to me about it. You stirred up this hunger and desire. You took a person from Arizona and flew them to Michigan to help give me an understanding and spend two weeks on the floor with me in the glory of God. And now you bring me back and verify everything in the word of God. Oh, my goodness. He is phenomenal, phenomenal. But friends, it was hunger. It was hunger that stirred it. I was desperate for more. And I know, I know you're hungry. I know you're desperate. I know you want that glory. That encounter that day changed my entire ministry. I saw the glory of God come into meetings where I didn't even have to preach. I laid down the microphone. I remember in in one meeting, the glory of God came down so strong. It's all I did was prostrated myself with a microphone in front of my mouth. And I was just a facilitator, a conduit of the Holy Spirit. I just spoke out what he told me to speak. It changed the way I ministered. After I was disciplined to get in the secret place, I had two years in the presence of God and then two weeks in the glory of God. And the phenomenal thing is I had been crying out because I was traveling the United States. I was ministering to 2 a.m. in the morning. And I'm like, Father, how do I continue to keep up this rate of laying hands on everybody, of having prayer lines that last till 2 a.m.? And I was struggling with it. I was wrestling in the flesh with how could I continue to do that. And I was on a 15-day tour, and I ended up in a church, and an apostle who I didn't know, who didn't know me, said, can I prophesy over you? And I said, yes, because I could tell he was an anointed man of God. And he said, God says that you are not going to have to lay hands on anyone. And they're going to be healed and delivered in the glory. Oh, Lord. That was an affirmation of what I've been crying out for. And I had seen it manifest in a few meetings, but not like it started to then. It was the cry of my heart for more. I've always been passionate to be physically fit because I'm like, I don't want to go to Africa and have a 16-hour service because they know how to do church there. And I don't want to say my body's tired. I can't pray for anyone else. And why I still believe physical fitness is important. I am so thankful that now I know I can just preach from the pulpit without laying hands and people are healed and delivered. We see it in almost all of our meetings. It changed the way I ministered crying out for the glory 
And I'm going to give you another key of how to cultivate that. But I'm just a facilitator. As I preach and as I speak the word of God, the Holy Spirit goes forth and heals and delivers. I don't have to lay hands on people. We've had incredible testimonies where people go up to the resource table or they'll Facebook message me or email me when I get home from an event because they were following me on Facebook. We kind of knew each other and they're like, I didn't come up to your prayer line because the Holy Spirit healed me in my seat. They would go back to the resource table and tell my assistants, we just got healed of back pain. How beautiful that we can be facilitators and conduits of the Holy Spirit and that there's no credit or glory that comes upon us because we didn't lay hands. So often people are looking for a man or a woman to lay hands on them. But when we yield to the Holy Spirit and we allow the Holy Spirit to come and do its work and men, we don't get the credit and only Jesus' name can be glorified. And that is the greatest hope in my heart is that in everything, Jesus' name can be glorified, that he alone gets the credit because he's worthy. Now, the glory comes in the meetings as soon as we start praying up. And that's the key I want to tell you. We have started praying our meetings up for years, a half hour, an hour before. We create an atmosphere conducive for the Holy Spirit to move. We want to permeate that sanctuary, that conference room, wherever we're holding an event, the actual room with audible declaring prayer. We don't want to just pray two weeks ahead of time or two months. We want to get in the atmosphere, the physical room where we're going to be ministering. And we pray it up and we allow the Holy Spirit to come in right during our prayer time. And friends, every time God shows up powerfully and strong and his glory manifest. It is so astounding. It's all we do is facilitate. Facilitate means it's all we do is call out words of knowledge or some natural insider instructions and a microphone, and we allow the Holy Spirit to come in. Sometimes we don't say a word. We might be prostrate on our knees, weeping. And the glory of God comes in, and people come to the altar without even being invited. People start praying in tongues. They cry out for God to heal them without even being instructed because they feel the shift. They feel the weight. They feel the glory come in and usher in that room like a tsunami wave. And that's what we want. We want God to come in. And we can have that when we yield to the Holy Spirit and spend time in that secret place. Our lives on stage, our lives out in the world, our lives in street evangelism should be a reflection of what we do in this secret place. The more we get of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the more we can give it away. The more we get in his presence, the more we get empowered. The more we get in the word and read books, the more artillery we get to exude to other people. The more we're in his presence, the more we learn to yield and cast down our flesh. There's church services made of man-made agendas and flesh. We have an agenda. We got to follow this format. The only format we have to follow is the Holy Spirit. I'm so passionate about walking with the Holy Spirit. I named my book and my podcast Prophetic Spiritual Warfare, partnering with the Holy Spirit after it. Because I believe we need to partner with the Holy Spirit in everything that we do and seeing in the spiritual realm and giving prophetic words and releasing healing in preaching, in our prayer time, in our worship time partnering with the Holy Spirit in every way. 
We need to learn how to do that in our secret place. So when he's asking us to do it in a public place, a public setting or a ministry meeting, we already know how to yield and submit. Submitting is also saying, God, your agenda is more important than mine. And I'm going to get in that secret place. I'm going to worship. I'm going to pray. I'm going to get in my word and discover all I can about you. After I sought God's glory, the meetings changed. People's lives have changed. Ministry is easy. I don't research a sermon because I allow the Holy Spirit to preach out of the abundance of what I have in a secret place. I get up to a pulpit and the Holy Spirit speaks. He does it out of the abundance of the impartation that I get from being in the secret place, from all the word that I have stored up in me. You see, the Holy Spirit's not going to speak out the word of God out of you that you haven't stored up inside of you. You have to make a deposit into your own soul, into your own spirit. So then the Holy Spirit withdraws from that and puts it out into the world. And that comes from us being in the secret place. I believe if we want to see end time revival and the next great awakening, the glory of God must be released upon this earth. People are so stubborn and headstrong. They have their own opinions and their own ways. And the only thing that's going to change that is a move of God. For them to see God show up in such power and in such might that they cannot deny it was the hand of the living God. That's what's going to change people. People who need deliverance aren't always going to be delivered without seeing a mighty manifestation and move of God because they are in a place of bondage, a place of a mind-binding, mind-blinding spirit that they can't even see how they're wrong in their thinking, behavior patterns, habits. They can't even see their pride and their control because they are so blinded by the demonic realm. Someone like that needs to see the glory of God in full manifestation in order to want their deliverance, to press through to their breakthrough. Whoo, Jesus. Releasing the glory comes from the overflow of that secret place. Friends, think about how good it feels to be in the presence of God. We love being in the presence. And then we get busy and we get sidetracked and we leave it. And we allow distractions to come in and delay us from our God time. We go through seasons and cycles Where it's like, Lord, I'm going to be in your presence for this many hours a day. This is going to be my devotional routine. And then life happens, busyness, a new opportunity, a new business venture. Something comes and it takes us out of the presence of God. And all of a sudden, we're not where we were. We have to continually pursue his glory, continually pursue his presence, and continually stay in tune to him. His glory can change our lives and others. I remember one time I was doing a teaching school. And a teaching school isn't supposed to be filled with the glory and presence, right? It's a teaching school. We're learning like in school. No, wrong. Because I had been in my hotel. I had been praying. I had been seeking. I was in a period where it's all I wanted was God to show up. And as I'm in this teaching school, all of a sudden, I smelled frankincense and myrrh come into the room. It was the one time I was sitting on a stool with a microphone in my hand. I usually teach standing up, but I happened to be sitting. And I'm like, I just smelled frankincense and myrrh come in this room. And I stopped and I yielded. I never push through. I always want to be like, God, what is this about? I want to discern it. I don't want to just keep moving in my flesh. And the Lord said, close the notebook. Stay on that stool. Don't lay hands on one person. And you just call out whatever I tell you. 
And friends, I tell you, the fire of God fell in that meeting. One girl, I said, fire of God is going to come upon you. The fire of God consumed her. And she started moving backwards violently until she only stopped because she hit a wall and slid down the wall. Backs were being healed by people who were sitting in their seats who had had debilitating back problems and were facing surgery. People started coming up to the altar and just prostrating themselves in the glory of God. Deliverance just started happening. I didn't lay hands on anyone. I just facilitated. I said, God wants to deliver you. Your back is being healed right now. I see oil going down your spine. I was just a facilitator of the glory and whatever the Holy Spirit was telling me to release. The altar was filled. Demons were just fleeing. People weren't casting demons out. They were crying. They were screaming. They were convulsing. They were just coming out because the glory of God came in that room and I yielded. Friends, you got to yield. That is important. It's not yielding to say, oh, look at me. I yielded. No, we got to yield because the glory of God comes in and we keep plowing. We keep doing what we want and we don't yield to what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And we have to yield to what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And I sat there on that stool for four hours as the glory of God changed lives, healed people, delivered people, set them on fire, exposed the enemy. The glory of God came in. And friends, the miraculous part of this story that I personally love is I was allergic to frankincense and myrrh. Every time I would minister with my apostle, I'd hold his anointing oil bottle for him. And he loved his frankincense and myrrh. And my hands would turn beet red. They would itch. They'd be on fire. I was allergic to it. And that day, I was healed. That very night, I went to my apostle's church, and I ministered with him, and I had no reaction. And that has been probably seven years, and I custom make my own anointing oil that we sell on our website with frankincense and myrrh. So I've made thousands of bottles, and guess what, friends? I have never had a reaction. And I fill them myself. I lay hands on them myself. I put that scent in there myself. It's a personal project to me. And I've never had one reaction. That is the goodness of God. That is the goodness of God, of our loving God. And I want to petition you, friends, where do you need to press in? And where do you need to yield? If you're a pastor, if you're a ministry leader, a Bible study leader, if you're even in a street evangelist, where do you need to yield? Where do you try and plow when you should be yielding to the Holy Spirit? And I want to ask you, are you praying up your sanctuaries? Are you so busy getting ready for an event and being last minute that you don't have time to pray audibly, out loud, in the room you're going to minister and invite the Holy Spirit? Worship Jesus with words, Psalm 104, you know, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter into his courts with praise, just saying, Jesus, I love you. I welcome you here. Father, you're holy. Father, what's on your heart today? I invite you here. I want this room conducive of miracles. Holy Spirit, have your way. I yield to you. I surrender. I need you, Lord. I want you, Father. Father, move in these people's lives today mightily. I cry out to you. Help me to yield. I want to usher in your presence, Father God. Abba, Daddy, you are so worthy. You are so holy. You are so mighty. Friends, when's the last time you just loved upon him? Because loving upon him releases a glory because his glory is love. His glory is a manifestation of love. 
And we need to just love upon him. Where is our heart? To say, Abba, Daddy, I love you. I need you in my life. I need you to help me minister to these people. I want you to change them. Release your glory. Show yourself powerful and strong and mighty. Jesus, come in and be their healer and their deliverer. I invite you. I want you. I need you. I yield to you. I cultivate an atmosphere of love. I release love into this room. I release peace into this room. I release a spirit of understanding and hope into this room. We have to cultivate that atmosphere. Cultivate it in our personal lives and where we are ministering. Cultivating an atmosphere of his love. Seeking his glory releases his glory. What are you seeking, my friends? Thank you for listening to the Prophetic Spiritual Warfare Podcast. Receive additional teaching through Kathy's Web Church Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and Facebook or through her Prophetic Spiritual Warfare book. I invite you to visit kathydegrawministries.org for books, mentoring, blogs, or to invite Kathy to speak at your event. Follow Kathy on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram at Kathy DeGraw. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, rate, and review the show. This helps our show rise in the rankings and reach more people to bring forth deliverance.